I just heard a car park across the street and someone get out with a flashlight. So I was, you know, carefully watching which way they went and it seems like they went the other way. So all good, everything's good. <laughs> This video is all about nightscape photography. So usually when astrophotographers talk about nightscapes, they're talking more wide angle camera lens work as opposed to deep sky astrophotography through a telescope, high magnification of deep sky objects like nebulae and galaxies. Nightscapes are more of a night scene, a more wide angle night scene, and usually with some foreground interest too, some landscape below it and you can see the night sky above. So it's not something I've done a whole lot of, but I really want to get into it more. And uh, I'm just going stir crazy in the house here. I haven't been out of the house in a long time. It's been so cloudy here in the backyard. I need to get out. So I'm going to head out to one of my favorite dark sky spots. It takes about an hour to get there and I still don't know if it's going to be clear tonight, but uh, it's worth a chance being new moon now. So I'm going to give it a shot. So the camera I'm bringing is the Canon EOS RA and one of my favorite lenses, the Sigma 24 millimeter F 1.4. I just love this camera and lens combo for wide field nightscape astrophotography. And I'm gonna use it tonight. So I'm really excited about that. Even though it's winter, it's about two degrees above zero. So it could be a lot colder out there. Won't get that nice, beautiful snowy landscape everyone loves, but really mild temperatures out there. And because the forecast calls for partially cloudy skies. I don't think I'll find anyone else out there. So again, a bonus, I can just do my own thing out there. If I had to describe what it looks like out here right now, it looks like it's about to rain. Uh, it's kind of foggy, uh, low clouds everywhere, which is a really bad sign for imaging. Uh, but I'm hoping the latest forecast I saw was right and I should be driving through this and out of it. That's the hope anyway. Otherwise, I'm just turning right around. Definitely the poorest conditions I've ever made a road trip for astrophotography in, ever. just heard a car park across the street and someone get out with a flashlight so I was you know carefully watching which way they went and it seems like they went the other way so all good everything's good here is my star tracker here the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i so I will set this to just regular star tracking modes sidereal rate and I'll mount my camera and lens at the top here. Uh, once it's polar aligned, I'll be able to take track shots of 60 to 90 seconds, and they'll be free of star trailing thanks to that compensation for the apparent motion of the night sky. A star tracker like this, especially a really portable one, is so handy for nightscape astrophotography. It's really a must. You can take tripod shots, of course, but then you'll be limited to 30 seconds, and then it can be hard to really pull out the details when you're limited to those shorter exposures. So a star tracker is great. The best part about it is that you can dial down your ISO settings and play with your other settings and your, your F ratio too. step that up to get sharper stars. Because if you're stuck on a stationary tripod and you're limited to 30 seconds, there's only so much you can do to let in a lot of light in a short period of time. And that's usually using a really fast F ratio, which sometimes creates bloated stars or a high ISO setting, which creates a lot of noise. So with the star tracker you can offset that by you shooting longer exposures so say you could shoot ISO 200 at f4 but do it for three minutes see what I'm getting at there you have way more options when you can shoot with a star tracker I was able to find a brief sucker hole in the clouds to polar align the mount so just through the polar finder scope of the star tracker here polar alignment is so critical for sharp round stars in your long exposure astrophotography. You want to have a sturdy base, a nice tripod, take your time with that polar alignment, really get it right. I have an app on my smartphone called Polar Finder on my Android phone that I use just to tell me the position that Polaris needs to be in on that reticle. 
and I just match it up on the mount here using the Altaz bolts and get that aligned. So now I am aligned with the rotational axis of the earth and I can take long exposure images. So don't rush that part, it's very important. The other thing is you don't want to nudge or bump your tripod. If you kick one of those tripod legs, you're going to have to pull or align again. So once you get it done, get it out of the way, just leave it be and try not to touch anything. You can, of course, attach your camera, do things like that, but just be careful not to move the mount. I am pleasantly surprised that the forecast I took a gamble on paid off because it is kind of clear out here, clear enough to get a wide angle nightscape shot. And with those thin layer of clouds, it almost adds a nice glow to the brightest stars in a constellation. So it gives it kind of a nice look. So for this type of astrophotography, if the transparency is poor, I would still give it a shot. And, uh, you know, maybe it's just because I'm desperate, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the shots I'm taking right now. I'm just in the car warming up a little bit now, but uh, my camera is firing away on the Orion constellation, taking 60 second exposures. So how these nightscape images usually work, you take long exposure images and a lot of them, stack them together of the night sky, and then you blend that with a foreground image. Ideally, it's the same foreground that is actually there when you're shooting those night sky long exposure shots but the foreground in your long exposure images with the night sky are going to be very blurred because of course that tracker is moving with the motion of the night sky so you want to shoot those separately and the best nightscape images often have a really interesting foreground landscape it could be mountains or a waterfall or trees or something interesting usually not a man-made object for a great nightscape photo the foreground has to be as interesting as the night sky and that is saying a lot so i'm not sure that i'll get there with this image but it should be a nice dark foresty look to it at least where it's not just an afterthought shooting the foreground where it's something i actually intentionally capture a really pretty foreground and blend the images together this is where travel really comes into play for nightscape astrophotography where it is the opposite of backyard astrophotography shooting over a house and a fence this is where you want to capture a beautiful landscapes you get way off the beaten path and just capture a beautiful night sky and try to capture the feeling of that isolation of being at a dark sky site so i'm really craving doing this type of astrophotography more in the future so uh, just getting my feet wet on a not so clear night tonight but i hope you enjoy the image at the end of the video and i hope you get nuts about nightscape astrophotography this year because i know i will until next time clear skies Definitely the scariest thing about being alone in the dark out in a remote location like this is hearing distant noises and crackles, uh, especially if it sounds kind of close to you. That's when it's really nice to have the headlamp and just a you know, laser beam them, whatever it is. For animals, you see their eyes right away, usually freaks them out. So uh, I'd rather see an animal than uh, a person out here, that's for sure. <laughs>